Good evening, and welcome to the virtual worship service of MCC Sacred Journey, coming to you tonight from Henderson, Hendersonville, North Carolina in the USA, where it is pouring down rain. You might hear that in the background. I uh, want to welcome all of you here tonight. I want to give thanks to my wife, Sherilyn Steckety, who's running the comments in the uh, Facebook uh, feed, and to our piano player and organist, Paul Wolf, who's with us through the miracle of technology. At this time, let's greet each other with the sign of God's peace. May God's peace be with you, and please share that peace with whoever you might be with. And now I invite you to rise in your to rise in spirit and to rise in your body as you're able and willing. If you stand up and sing, you're going to feel better, I guarantee you. Um, and let's sing two verses of As the Deer. want to just remind everyone that um, uh, we would be honored if you would click a like or a love or put a comment on so that we know you're with us tonight. Let us know who you are and where you're from. We'd love to welcome you. This evening, in our call to worship, Theologian Wendy Farley says, the difficulty and crisis of the world is overwhelming. It's virtually impossible to bear it without very deep resources. So our question tonight is, are you ready for a deeper well inside? Consider this, all things are beautiful, not by a standard of what's pretty, as seen by our eyes, but by an essence of sacred worth that is sensed by the Spirit. This is the root and heart of compassion and justice. Beauty is the threshold to divine goodness. 
and it's a door into radical compassion. Contemplation trains our spirits to see this deeper truth. In the next six weeks, we will pursue contemplative life to deepen our spiritual capacities so that we might live as the beloveds of God, beloveds who extend goodness into the world. So I invite you now to light your candle as we begin our worship. Let's pray. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We offer ourselves in connection with you. We allow ourselves this love from you. We release ourselves into your presence and let all the people say, Amen. Amen. And let's sing as a response for the beauty of the earth. Just sing the first verse uh, and I hope you know the tune. If not, I think you can catch up pretty quickly. Mm. For the beauty of the earth for the splendor of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. God of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful Let us hear the word of God in scripture. A reading is from Ezekiel 31. Consider Assyria, a cedar of Lebanon, with fair branches and forest shade, and of great height, its top among the clouds. The waters nourished it, the deep made it grow tall, making its rivers flow around the place it was planted, sending forth its streams to all the trees of the field. So it towered high above all the trees of the field. Its boughs grew large and its branches long, and from abundant water in its shoots. All the birds of the air made their nests in its boughs, under its branches, all the animals of the field gave birth to their young. And in its shade, all the nations lived. It was beautiful in its greatness, in the length of its branches, for its roots went down to abundant water. Thank you. move my flowers to uh, sit in front of the candle for for a bit uh, because like everything else in the home of a pastor sooner or later it has now become a sermon illustration I wrote in our church newsletter a couple of weeks ago about my garden how I was describing 
to one of my friends that I grew flowers and tomatoes and parsley and lavender and um, all kinds of herbs and uh, and she paused for a second and she said so don't you grow any food and I realized it's not a subsistence garden I could have grown corn and beans and squash and in a pinch we could live on that amen now when I choose things to grow I choose them for beauty uh, everything you see behind me in that bouquet came out of my yard the lilies and the lavender I planted there on purpose there's a daylily bud and some Spanish olive greenery foliage that I didn't put there on purpose the uh, the usual expression for that is that they're weeds but they're very good-looking plants that are growing someplace where I didn't want them what's the point of beauty what's the use of flowers and herbs they can't feed our bodies to sustain our life but they feed our souls and that counts and right now I'm guessing that a lot of us probably have souls that could use some feeding so will you pray with me please Holy One we thank you for this day we thank you for the rain that nourishes the earth we pray that the rain might fall softly and not cause damage or injury to anyone. We pray in this moment that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, that together we might discover your word and your wisdom for us this evening. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow we'll mark three weeks since the since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in the past three weeks, the news has been filled with the protests and the resignations and the arrests and the promises and the commitments and the energy for ending racism. That's all filled the last three weeks to where it feels like we might really be at a tipping point. In, the ter in terms of how African Americans are treated in this country. And then yesterday, we saw the news of the death of Rayshard Brooks, a man of African descent who fell asleep or passed out in his car. It's not clear which, doesn't matter. But he was sleeping in his car in the drive through lane of a fast food restaurant and the restaurant, thinking maybe he was in trouble, called the police. And an hour, hour and a half later, he was dead, shot in the back by the police. And I don't know what was in his mind, and I don't know what was in the minds of those police officers, and we may never know. But when we step back and look at the story, what started off, as somebody who needed to be wakened and helped to a safer place ended up dead and he happened to be black it is sickening to keep hearing stories like this and we find ourselves asking what does it take to end uh, can I tell the truth? We are, we are trying to end four centuries of a legacy that holds people of African descent to be disposable on one level or another. That's, that's the harsh truth of it. And people of goodwill want to end that, and it doesn't seem to happen. I've talked about this issue in the last couple of weeks, I've talked about some of what it takes. Um, it takes a change of heart and a new awareness on the part of white folks. 
It will take changes in our economic and social and religious and educational and political systems. But what I want to talk about today is part of what will be required in our souls, and that is spiritual strength. For living into and sometimes struggling into being the beloved community is hard. It's wicked hard. It requires all of us to face uncomfortable facts about ourselves. It requires us to do the hard work of building trust where mistrust has grown. It requires us, some of us, to give up our privilege and to keep in mind that some of us are just born into a privilege that others of us don't get to take for granted. And that's hard. So it's going to take some God stuff. Amen. Amen. It's going to take spiritual strength. How do we get that strength for the long haul to keep a spirit of radical compassion alive and growing in our hearts? Where do we get that from? I submit tonight for our consideration that our hearts need connection like God, just like trees need water. So in the next, in, tonight and for the next five weeks after this, we're going to focus on contemplative spirituality, the nurturing of our connection and awareness of God. And specifically, nurturing our awareness of God the awareness that comes from noticing the beauty of all of God's creation. So for tonight, I simply submit for our consideration that our spirits need beauty, just like trees need water. Consider the fabled biblical cedars of Lebanon. This evening, Cheryl and Red five verses of the prophet Ezekiel. And in those five verses, Ezekiel mentions water three times. Do you think that's a hint? <laughs> it may be obvious, trees need water, but Ezekiel wants us to notice for sure that trees need water, amen? A tree becomes strong and tall because it sends its root deep, as deep as possible, into the water. It's not only tall and strong and beautiful, a tall cedar is also, also useful to other creatures. Amen? It gives shelter to birds and squirrels and other critters. So, what does that say about us? We're not cedar trees, but we give shelter to each other when it's needed. We encourage other people when they're discouraged. So where does that encouragement come from? It can only come from our own spiritual wells. It comes from our own connection to God. And what we call contemplative prayer whether it's quiet time with the Bible, whether it's silent meditation, contemplative spirituality and contemplative prayer is the cultivation of our connection with God. So, you can buy a lot of books on contemplative prayer, and some of them get really, really deep into the practice of... Um, clearing our minds, clearing our spirits so that we can just sit with God. That may not be the easiest place to begin. Um, the point of contemplative spirituality is basically to get out of our own heads, to forget about ourselves, and to pay attention to God. So, some of us may sit for an hour with the Bible, 
and take that as our quiet time with God. Some of us may be used to sitting for 25 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour and emptying our, our thoughts of everything except God. If you think that's easy to do, you haven't tried it. <laughs> I'm confident in that. I could be wrong. But I'm confident that if you think that's easy, you haven't tried it. People spend their whole lives cultivating that practice of just sitting with God and not letting anything else intrude. Not your to-do list, not what I'm going to have for dinner when this is finished. Let it go. It's harder than you think. So that may not be the best place to start. So I encourage us, if we're not used to a practice of prayer, to start simple. Make some time each day to notice beauty and to see God in it. To thank God for it, but most importantly, to see it with God's eyes. When we see with God's eyes, everything and everyone is beautiful because God made it. And as scripture tells us, six times God said, damn, that's good. Roughly quoting Genesis there. That's good. Scripture is really clear about that. So I want to suggest just a simple practice for this week. You're going to need a living thing other than yourself, uh, preferably a plant, and you're going to need some water. And so here's a practice I suggest to you. Sometime this week, pour yourself a glass of water. Take a drink from it. Notice how it tastes. Notice how refreshing it is. Then take the rest of that glass of water and water a plant. Congratulations! You will now have nurtured one living thing other than yourself. One beautiful, growing, living creature. And look for places where you can recognize beauty and feed that well of thanks to God and connection to God within your own spirit. There is beauty all around us and there is beauty in us. Our assignment this week is to simply recognize that beauty and help it to flourish. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for all that you have made, for all whom you have made. And as we come tonight with grief for the brokenness of our world, we ask that you fill us with hope that that brokenness can be healed and that the world may become stronger in those broken places. Give us the hope, the strength, to believe that all things are possible with you. Give us the depth of love that we can extend love to other people and to keep trying and to keep challenging ourselves to be more loving and more open. Because God, that's what we expect from you. And so we trust that you can help us to do the same with each other. We ask this in Jesus' name and all your many names. Amen. Amen. This evening, um, I invite you to make, take some time to make an offering, to give something back to God. Um, there's information on the screen uh, in the content, con the, easy for me to say, 
There's information in the comments about how you can make a gift to MCC Sacred Journey, which of course we would welcome. And uh, it's also fine if you want to take this time just to write a check to uh, a charity of your choice. The point is for us to take this time to do something that's generous, as God is generous. And so we'll listen to a little music and I invite you to practice generosity. Having given thanks to God through our generosity, we come to God in prayer and pray this evening for, um, for the family of Rayshard Brooks, for all those who are grieving, for all those who are afraid, for all those who are uncertain about their future, for all the people of Atlanta and the world. God, we pray that you would guide us, kick our butts as needed, and lead us to be the people that you've called us to be, a people who honor your beauty in each and every other person. We pray for our leaders that they might govern with wisdom. We pray for all those who are out of work, looking for work. We pray for Mara and for all those who are trying to get by in this time of difficulty. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for Priscilla. We pray for all those who are affected by COVID-19. God, for those who are dying, that you would receive them gently. For those who are ill and struggling, that you would bring them through to health. And for caregivers and medical workers and first responders, that you would bless them and bless them richly. 
We pray for healing for Ginny as well, for the sprained wrist. God, that that would heal soon. And we pause for the prayers that you wish to name or the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts. And let us pray as Jesus taught us, using whatever name for God works for us, our Creator. Creator. Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Here at MCC Sacred Journey, as in all metropolitan community churches around the world, we celebrate an open communion, which means that we don't care what you believe happens in this experience of sharing bread and the fruit of the vine. Um, consubstantiation, transubstantiation, memorial meal, uh, cool. Because we know that none of us truly understands what it is that Jesus has left to us to remember him by. We just remember that he did. And we also believe in the priesthood of all believers, which means that you have the spiritual authority that you need as a believer to take and break bread and to share bread and the fruit of the vine in whatever form you wish. This is cherry juice. And have that sharing be for you in whatever way you understand it. A real presence in communion with the living Christ. So remembering that Jesus took bread and broke it and said, take and eat and remember me. Took wine and shared it said, take and drink and remember me. Let us share some food now and remember that whenever we do this, Jesus is with us. For the gift of his breath. Thank you for the fruit of this. Take this bread and this cup of gifts to us. Our closing song is, Shall We Gather at the River? I invite you again to rise as you're able in body, mind, or spirit. And let's join in singing. We'll just sing. We'll sing three verses. And... And here's some music.
Shall we gather at the river Where bright angel feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up in silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather up the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. As we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down, grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather up the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. So. Let us pray. This world is so varied and beautiful. So seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, the insight of the Spirit, and the love of the one who has more names than we can imagine, infuse your life now and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Again, if you can give us a like, a love, or a comment and let us know you were here, we'll be grateful to extend a, a welcome back to you. And um, there are some announcements, especially for members and friends of MCC Sacred Journey. Uh, we have some meetings this week. Board of Directors meeting is open to all the members and congregants. That's Tuesday. Wednesday at 6.30 is our journey, and Thursday morning at 11 Eastern Time is our Bible study, and all those are in the MCC Zoom room. The information is in the comments field there. And next week, we're going to be on Zoom. So we invite you to join us at 5 o'clock for a virtual coffee half hour, and at 5.30, we'll begin recording so you can stay on Zoom if you don't mind being recorded, or you can switch over to Facebook. We will record and live stream to Facebook. So next Sunday on Zoom, um, and I look forward to seeing you then. Till then, have a blessed week. Bye-bye.